Hello and welcome back. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got left to do. In the pipeline here, I've got one control input next to the flags that I'm yet to explain. I've got one output from pipeline stage two, which I'm actually going to get to quite soon. And then I've got a whole bunch of work to do converting this circuitry to PCB. But there's one section of this CPU build that I'm yet to properly finalize. In the very first video, I said this was a temporary clock. And I've added to it a little bit since then. But there's a couple of things about this I'm not very happy with. I can change the range of clock speed by swapping some of these components in. But if I drop the value of the capacitor down to give me a higher maximum clock rate, then the single step operation becomes unstable and sometimes double skips. I want to work on a replacement to this over the next couple of videos, but I also want to add to that a, a new way of handling reset. I was never very comfortable with this. Now what I did here in video 45 was I built a circuit which will add additional clocks while the reset is in progress. That clears out the pipeline as long as they happen right. Occasionally it glitches because one of those clocks overlaps with the end of the reset because it's very analog and there's no constraint to the timing. I can maybe show you exactly what that's doing. Okay, so I'm going to put channel one here onto the reset line. Okay, so that's set to falling edge trigger. Let's see if we can capture the pipeline clock while that's happening. Okay, so that trace is really quite messy. And this is why I don't really like it. There's something weird going on there that I perhaps could tidy up by cleaning up the connections, but it, it feels very non-deterministic. So I would like to spend a bit of time looking at an alternate way of handling the reset. If we look at what the purpose of the reset is, while the reset line is active, we hold the clear line on the address registers and we also hold one of the control inputs to the fetch units. It always emits a knot. And so all we actually need is to have a series of at least three clocks while the reset line is held active and everything's cleaned up. So this circuit attempted to inject those clocks while the reset itself was active. But alternatively, we could build a circuit which prevented any execution from happening in any fetch until we had received sufficient clocks to reset it. And that's what I want to look at doing. I think it's going to be a, a simpler and better reset circuit. So my plan is to spend a few sessions implementing the new clock and reset circuit on a couple of breadboards and interspace that with doing the PCB design work to convert the rest of this over to PCBs. Okay, so let's get a breadboard out. Actually feels quite nice coming back to a clean, empty breadboard. Let's get some power. Now, one thing I want to do for the final clock circuit is separate out single step clock, high speed clock, and a kind of adjustable visual range clock. I'm gonna start off with here, with just building a single stepping clock. Is your classic 555 timer. Power and ground. Okay, so I'm going to cross connect trigger and threshold. That's quite a common configuration. I want a capacitor here. I'm going to put it on this side this time. So then we're going to wire a switch up so that the charge on the capacitor is either pulled up or down depending on the configuration of the switch. And then we'll use the, the two comparators in here to switch the latch on and off. So as I pull down and now I need a pull up. OK, 
Okay, here's the output line. I want to wire that into an LED for now, just so we can see it. Short that over to ground. And last but not least, this active low reset, we're going to need to pull that high. Okay, it looks like we've got a basic manual clock circuit going. Okay, I want to add a reset to this. I'm building a much simpler circuit here. The switch is going to pull down because we want an active low signal. And now I just need a pull up resistor. Okay, I'm actually going to du duplicate out this circuit because I think we uh, will want a second one temporarily. Okay, I think it'd be quite good to look at these signals on the scope and see if they behave the way we expect. Okay, I'm going to add in some decoupling caps. Don't know how much good these are really doing on a breadboard, but we've seen places where it does benefit the circuit. Okay, firstly, let's have a look at one of these simple pull down circuits. Okay, so we can see here that we get a nice stable flat ground or 5 volts, depending on the state of the button. But there's a little bit of fuzziness here at the transition. And this is bounce on the switch. Now for our reset button this isn't going to matter, but for the clock that would be disastrous. So let's see what our clock but clock line looks like. Very, very deliberate and very consistent. Just got that little bit of a bounce at the start. We've seen that on the 555 circuits before. Well, we've achieved what we set out to there. So I wanted to be able to count clocks to hold the reset state. So let's start with a counter. This is a 74LS193 up-down counter. Primary reason I've selected this is because I've got lots of them. We need power and ground. Pin 14, we've got the master reset. Need to pull that low. So we've got the outgoing carry for up and down. And then we've got the parallel load. To bring that in from over there. Okay, so count down. Can pull that high. Now we can take the count up from our clock. Okay, I'm going to shortcut with a resistor array here. Gives us five LEDs. Okay, let's try and work this out. Okay, so output bit zero comes from there. Output bit one is the next one along. Let me come over here in reverse order. Okay, so that's working nicely. We can count and it will go through a 0 to 15 in binary cycle. Okay, so the next thing we want is a latch to hold the reset state. Right, now this is a 74LS00. So it's a quad NAND gate. With the display video, I used one of these to construct a set reset latch but with active low inputs. I think that's what we want here because the resets that we've got elsewhere in the circuit are active low. So what we need to do is take two of these NAND gates and have the output of each drive the input of one of the others. So that is the output of the lower one driving the second input on this one. So we need its output 
driving second input there. So the first input to that one can come from this button. The first input to this one can come from that one. Right, so that's exactly what we want. So all the bounciness of these switches should be irrelevant to us here because the moment we make contact, the latch changes and it won't change until we go to the other one. So now, how are we going to merge these two parts of the circuit? Now, we want the reset button to put us into reset state or anything else that brings the reset line low, but we want to come out of reset state when we've made enough clock ticks to have reset the pipeline. So let's start by putting the input to the second NAND gate, or the non-reset input to the set reset latch, and see what happens there. So now, when we go to the carry point, the line resets. So we can count along here indefinitely, and there's a non-issue. We stay inside the non-reset state, push the reset button, and then when we wrap around, it resets. So we have an unknown number of clocks between the reset and the reset switching off. So we need to work out how to control that. Now we've got the clear line here, and we could get the signal from the reset itself into the clear line, and that would set this all to zero. And then we would have 16 clocks before the carry signal goes, and the reset state falls off, and that circuit would work. But that does mean that we're generating quite a lot more clocks than we actually need, so it'd be nice to work out a way of more tightly controlling that. Now the way I'd like to do that is to switch away from using the count up and switch to using the count down. So switch that to the borrow line. So now this is counting down. And when I get to zero, we attempt to borrow and the reset switch is off. Now the benefit of this is instead of using the clear to zero this, I can use the parallel load to load whatever value I want into the four bits of the counter, and that will be the number of clocks it will take before the reset switches off. Okay, so that's bit zero, bit one, bit two, and bit three. Okay, so this was our parallel load line. When that goes low, it will load the value, which is currently four, I've set this to. We can take this signal from the reset line itself. So now when we reset, it loads, and then it counts down. And that is the circuit doing exactly what we want. So we enter reset state from the reset button and the current value that we've selected here will load into here, currently four, but we can set that to any value between zero and 15. And we count down, we get to zero, the borrow happens and reset state switches off. That's awesome. I don't like that though. If the clock continues going, that means this circuit is going to constantly be counting downwards from 15 to 0 indefinitely. Let's see if we can sort that out. So we've got a few NAND gates down here. Let's drive the count down from the output of one of those. Have the input be the clock. 
And then the second input can be the output from this set reset latch. So we're ending the clock with the current status of the set reset latch. So now when we get the reset state, the output can never go low. That's brilliant. So get the reset. And we get four clocks before it changes state. And we can, of course, change that clock count by modifying these inputs as much as we want. OK, now that is a really quite simple circuit. And I'm actually really happy with this. It's, uh, it's worked exactly as I hoped it would. And of course, the big benefit is here is apart from just for debouncing up here, this is an entirely digital circuit, which is the world we prefer to work in. OK, well, I very much hope you found this interesting. I'm quite enjoying going back to uh, more basic circuits for a little while. The next outing in this sub series will be adding some more clock control. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.